Greetings, my name is Trinity French, and I am one half of the coaching team here at Wired to Change with the number two. We help you get your business to the level you want it to be at so you can enjoy the life of a small business owner. <laughs> and we are back here today with my very, 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 very special friend, Mr. Anders Varner. And we're going to continue our conversation that I was so sad that we had to stop <laughs> in the first place. Right. So how are you doing today? Fantastic. Always. Always. I've never seen you without a smile on your face, pep in your step. There's no reason not to. Exactly. So I wanted to open the show with one of my, um, a personal question. Let's do it. So as a small business owner, um, I have my real estate practice and I also have my coaching practice. Okay. And a new husband. Yeah. Um, who is a doll and actually, um, does not like enjoys going to the gym with me and working out and everything. But we, when we got engaged and started and we're getting married and then came back from our honeymoon and COVID happened and we had both kind of been slacking off when our, in our newly married yeah. state, because it was more fun to like stay at home and snuggle. And, yeah. Um, and now that I realized like, oh my gosh, like what did you do to your body? Um, it, it just takes one time looking in the mirror when you're naked to be like, holy <laughs> shit, Stop. what happened? But what is your advice for someone such as myself who knows that they need to be back into a routine, but feels devastated that they have to start over from ground zero? First off, you should know that you're not alone in this. You're pretty, that's just pretty average for right now. Um, most people don't own home gyms. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once their gym got taken away from them, they were left with nothing. And then uh, if you, this is, this is like the general flow of how it has all um, played out. People are really excited about doing body weight workouts for like, two weeks, mm -hmm. three weeks, and then got so tired of doing push-ups and sit-ups in their living room that they just stopped. Um, it's really pretty normal for motivation is only, it's, it's like this dying thing. You can only be motivated for so long until you have to actually have some real life purpose behind it. And that would be really, um, where I would start of just what, what do you actually want out of fitness? Because the gym might not be your thing. We don't have to go. We like to put things into little boxes. Like I have to go to the gym in order to be in shape. And you don't really, you don't have to go lift weights specifically. You have your body to go mm -hmm. lift weights if you want. Um, I think the harder question is um, what do you like to do? See, I actually enjoy lifting weights. So I would go. much rather go spend an hour lifting weights and going heavy and going hard yeah. than doing cardio. That's or, fantastic. Yeah. Um, but you're right. Like the weights that I have at home are from just because, you know, like I keep some weights in the living room because if I'm yeah. watching TV, I just like to do some like biceps and triceps because totally. it's like awesome. I'm sitting in front of the TV. Yeah. So why the hell not? Um, but they're just little 10 pound, five pound weights. They're not, I don't have a home, you know, whole yeah. weight set. And totally. quite honestly, right now, I don't think I could even get my hands on one because everything's can't. sold out. You, can't, you actually can't. Yeah. Um, I would go and grab a big bag of sand. Oh. And, or a couple bags of rice from Costco uh -huh. and tape those things together as tight as you possibly can so they don't break open and get really good at picking that up. Um, they, That's a really good idea. I have sandbags at my house. I love using them. They're awesome. Um, I'm really lucky that I have a fully stacked gym in my house um, just because I, I work with a great company that's completely sold out of everything right now. Um, Weights don't have to look like barbells and they don't have to look like uh, plates and they don't have to look like dumbbells. It can just be anything that's heavy ish mm -hmm. near you. And when it comes down to um, figuring out exactly what you 
how you shape your own fitness journey. Um, it may not be optimal in the way that you've always done it, but it might be optimal for right now. And that everything that you're doing or everything that you enjoyed doing when the gym was open, you can still make work. It just is going to, you're going to have to buy into the creativity of figuring out what the new way to do it is. And that really just starts with a low level goal of some sort of, I'm, I don't even like goals that are two months out, three months out, 30 days out. I just, I enjoy commitment to the process. Um, so for me, that looks like I wake up at five or five thirty in the morning. I'm out of bed at five or five thirty. more often than not five thirty because that half an hour feels amazing. Um, and instead of thinking about, um, instead of thinking about like, I have to go work out. The first thing I want to do is just check in and run like a systems check on my body and make sure that there's no pain, make sure that my glutes are turned on, make sure that my arms are working properly. Like just have this like systems check the same way that if you turn your car on or an airplane or, or anything, anything else, like yeah. I want to wake up and know right off the bat where I'm at for the day physically. I also like to go outside and I like to say what's up to nature a little bit, say hello to the trees because they give us oxygen and that's important to us. And then there's all these birds flying around and they're <laughs> tweeting chirping. and <laughs> chirping and doing their thing. And it's cool to be a part of that. And no one else is awake. So you go downstairs, make your coffee, whatever you want to do. But instead of giving yourself the option to do something else, just drop, drop down and do some push-ups, do uh -huh. some squats, because that is the smallest buy-in. And I call it the diesel dad 100 because I'm a dad and I don't have a lot of time and I've got a kid and I've got a business and I've got a wife. And when you start stacking dad and husband and family and business, all of a sudden, Fitness is like the fourth thing that I get to do during the day. And that's ridiculous because I'm like a professional fitness person. That should be way at the top, but it's not. And it's really hard for the fourth most important thing in your day to get done. So the only time that I know that I own, I can't control if Adelaide gets sick. I can't control if my wife needs to go somewhere. I can't control a lot of things in the business outside of, you know, what my day to day is, but if somebody calls and they're sick or we're not just a host of things that could go wrong in the business that could just swallow my day. Well, from five to five 30 in the morning, I pretty much own that because I'm up before everyone else. Therefore there's going to be a much smaller chance of things killing me. So I own that I own from basically five to five 30, five 30 to six. And I get all of the basic necessities for general health done at that time. So I move my body, I go outside, I ground myself because I walk around barefoot, I go for a mile long walk, I drink coffee and I read a book. It's not over the top, it's really simple. Each piece may cost me between three and eight minutes, mm -hmm. but I get some low level cardio, I get to go walk around barefoot, I get to turn on all the muscles in my body. I get to make sure my joints feel good. I've walked outside and actually connected with nature, seen the sun come up. If I don't work out that day at a very minimum, I've gotten the basics done. And then, so you never, so you never ensue. fall out of it because if you're doing at least something, well, you can't then fall you, out of it. If you commit, right. I think that the thing is, is that you just have to commit. And, and I think people, really overwhelm themselves with, with what marketing and their idea of fitness is in that it's really just about the snowball effect. Like starting at zero is awesome. I kind of feel like I start at zero every morning. And instead of worrying about where I'm at in 60 days, I just want to crush it today. Like I didn't train today. I would have loved to have trained, but life is busy and then it was two o'clock and I had to come here and I'm stoked to hang out and this is probably super healthy to begin with because I'm talking to an actual human <laughs> um but it's just you have to create the time and hold yourself accountable to it and just do it in a way you know you're in real estate 
And if people come to you and they go, well, I just have like a really hard time saving money. I would love to buy a house, but I just, I struggle saving money. You go, well, stop spending it. Right. And they go, well, yeah, but I have, no, you don't. No, you, you don't. You just spend it. Right. There's, there's literally no excuse that's worthy of anything more than you just don't say you spend too much you buy crap and it's the same concept like being in bed is way more comfortable totally get it being like sitting on the couch and cuddling at night is way more comfortable 100 percent. you're at, you're not wrong at all it's just about realizing doing the uncomfortable thing and holding yourself accountable is the most important piece to creating long-term sustainable habits. So when the alarm goes off at five, it sucks. I lay there and I'm like, this is stupid. Why do I do this? Why do I have to get out of bed right now to go do a workout that nobody cares about? That's not going to be like a workout anyways, but I roll out of bed. As soon as my feet hit the floor, it's rad. I go downstairs. The house is super quiet. I go out to my gym. I do push-ups. I do sit-ups. Sometimes I'll lift weights. Um, I go on a mile long walk around my um, my neighborhood and then I sit down and I start working at 6.30 and I don't have anybody around. My wife handles the little one until eight and then from eight to nine, 9.30, um, I'm able to be with the family, do what I need to do. And then I have from basically nine, 9.30 until four to crush it. And hopefully in there I get to work out at some point. Um, but I think that just, Fitness isn't that hard. Like if people, I'm saying people, and you ask this question about you personally, but as but a I know whole, that other people struggle with the same with thing this because they think that they need to do so much and that it's such a cumbersome act. Like the most important cardio you can do in your life is just walking. So go for a walk every night. Like mm -hmm. hold hands with your significant other. Have a real life conversation because people aren't. The problem isn't that people don't have time. It's that they waste their time doing other sitting things. on their phone or watching TV because it's much more comfortable to do nothing than to do something. And it, there, is, there isn't enough return on the investment by doing it one day. So you're like motivated. And this is why motivation just runs out so quickly because you might go for a two mile walk and it's a beautiful conversation and it's a beautiful everything. But then the next day, you had a tough day at work. And what are you? You're just tired. Mm -hmm. You go, ah, we'll just do it tomorrow because, well, now you're just instilling bad habits. Every mm -hmm. day you don't do it is a bad habit in the wrong way. Or it's a habit that you're creating in the wrong way. And recognizing that no matter what it is, being consistent over time is the most important thing you can do. It's not hard. We could do it right now. Drop down and do 20 push-ups. That's awesome right now. But can you do it for 500 days in a row? Mm-hmm. Because everybody right now can drop down and do the push-ups. Everybody can do the squats. It's not, it's, it takes no time. It's just actually getting yourself to hold yourself accountable and just do something that gets the ball rolling and then hold yourself accountable and do it every day. That makes me feel a lot better because we do go walking every day, which Walking's amazing. I don't probably give us enough credit for that even though this week i have chosen to sleep in instead of <laughs> right. get up walking and go walking is, with my husband and is probably the most underrated thing that you can do just as a as health happens for weight loss um increasing your metabolism like just go walking if you can get your ten thousand steps a day mm -hmm. it's not like you're gonna be some freak show athlete Olympian by walking four miles, but 10,000 steps is a great goal and you are going to be doing something. Would I like you to also do the push-ups and the air squats? Totally. But if I have to, I'm going to take that as the initial buy-in and then I'm going to look at you and say, okay, well, if you can do that, there's no way you couldn't do the push-ups. Right. Now I'm, now I'm only asking you like three to four days a week to give me an extra two minutes. Give me two minutes, four days a week, and just do 50 push-ups and 50 air squats combined total. You can totally do that. And now we just start to layer habits on top of each other because it's not, you know, something that I try to overcome is just the inertia of doing nothing. Like you just, you're just stuck. And it's, 
it's in fitness, it's in people's careers, it's in the way that they view themselves. You're always growing. You're always progressing. You just really want it to be progressing and growing in a way that is positive to the outcome of your life and in a direction that you want it to be because doing nothing is a decision that is going to continue to grow. You just continue to do nothing. Right. And getting out of that rut is, is oh, it's really challenging. Well, you've made me feel a lot more motivated and excited to get out of my rut. So check it out. Uh, we just put out, I was telling you in the last this show is, that we so this started. Is my, so this is my, um, like, confession to the world that listens to the podcast. That's awesome. So check it out. Which is that I'm terrified to go back to the gym because my gym clothes look like shit. <laughs> so I'm so excited look. to get my bike because I was like, okay, this is, and this is probably the girl in me that like, no, you know. Yeah. Do you want to look good? Do you want to have your gym clothes? Yeah. Like gym clothes are fashionable. I have one of my good friends, not really a good friend. I've worked with her a couple times, but her name's Callie Bunny. She's like Instagram super famous. Every day she has like club clothes on. I'm like, where do you find like club clothes that are also fitness clothes? Like, how does this, how does how that does even happen? exist? Yeah. Your, your clothing sponsor is like a real designer. Like I'm wearing just shorts and a t-shirt, t-shirt. and you're in here <laughs> with like these insane fabrics and designs. It's super important. You want to feel good, look mm-hmm. good, play good, feel good. All yep. of it. Um, so, well, I was telling in the last show, where we, or maybe it was in the pre-show, but we we started our business in a way completely back over. I made the joke uh, when COVID hit. It was like our company's name, Barbell Shrugged. The government has taken away all of the barbells in the world. So I don't know what we do. We just shrug. Like, what, what am I supposed to do? They just took basically what is our entire business and said, well, no one can use the tools that you need for them to do the programs. Okay, so we went body weight. We went and did all this stuff. And throughout, COVID has like really, in a way, brought me closer to my family. And in a way, in many ways, it's made my marriage better. It's made me a better dad because I am typically on the road between five and 10 days a month, which doesn't seem like a lot because there's 20 days you're at home, but that 10 days turns over very quickly. Like right. it's a lot of time in airports. And when I go places, I get to live this like rad life where I'm like in cool cities. I'm hanging out with these people that I've always wanted to be around. We're doing these interviews. They think we're cool. We're just like showing up to their city and they take us to these awesome spots. Like when your friend comes to town, you don't take them to like the average bar or the average restaurant. You always take them to the nice place, the one where you know the maitre d', the one that you know the person behind the bar. You take them to the cool spot. So we get that treatment when we like go all these places. And now you take that whole travel lifestyle that I'm relatively used to. And now I'm like at home. And I've got to be husband for five straight months. I've got to be dad for five straight months with no breaks in between. And it radically shifts. Be- everything about your perception of your family because it's no longer me when I'm at home and then me when I'm on the road. It's I'm only me at home. But in the middle of a lockdown, quarantine, me at home is working, it's dad, it's husband, and then my wife has has now an, an office that's shut down and she's working from the dining room. And daycare shut down, so now my daughter's home and all day, every day. And you're figuring out daycare, well, and I stay typi- at home care for, yeah. yeah. And I'm typically working 10, 12 hours a day anyways, or just at work, thinking about work, training. Like, my lifestyle is that long throughout the day, from 6 to 6, basically. And, you know, the whole lifestyle shifts. So I'm no longer... Um, I no longer have this like freedom to go to the gym for 60 to 90 minutes, but I'm not going to stop training. So how many parents right now or how many people are stuck in their house? Their life is completely shifted. They're, they're not just playing, um, you know, person at the office, their job. They're not just playing. Oh, now I go from my office to the gym and then I come home. It's I'm only at my house. So how do we create 
strength and conditioning? How do we create really good training programs? And we designed a program that it's literally 20 minute workouts. You'd be blown away at, what we call it EMOM aesthetics. So we're taking like functional training that you would do in like your standard CrossFit gym or like a functional training facility. We pair it up with a lot of the accessories that you would see in like a bodybuilding world. So people can still build muscle. They can still feel like an athlete. The intensity level is a little bit higher because we condense it all down in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And now we have this beautiful package that is crushing right now because we're meeting people where they're at because I'm the person that needs help. Like I had to reshape everything that I've ever thought fitness to be. And we designed it into this package. And it turns out there's thousands of parents out there right now that are in their house with a kid and then nap time happens. And they've got two hours almost where they can so do laundry to clean up the kitchen to get it, their workout right? in. Yeah. And they look at their clock and they go, well, I might have like 20 minutes. And you go, perfect, done. Yeah. And the thing is, is that before this, I would have never told you that in 20 minutes you can do your whole workout. Like you need to have this, you know, speed and athleticism piece, then these strength pieces, then these accessory pieces to put a full workout to program together. And I would have never had to force myself into the creativity to go and create something that's brand new, that's never existed and purely meet the market and myself being the market where, where we're at right now. And it's radically shifted our business because we had to go and create something that didn't exist and meet people where they're at. And when we put it out, it just, it was, it was like all of the parents like got together and they were like, Oh, that's us. So you don't have to have this. Like, I, I love saying protect this house because Under Armour used to have such good commercials. Um, but like this, like protect the house mentality where you're just like grinding through these 60 to 90 minute workouts. We can just get small doses of awesome throughout the day. You're allowed to go hit it hard for 20 minutes. And then when, when it's your turn to be dad and mom's working and she's doing the business thing, well, why don't we just go for a walk? So now when I'm babysitting, I go to the soccer field and I run around mm -hmm. and we kick the soccer ball and I'm doing fitness but what i'm really doing is just trying to create an, an athletic a an active life in which everyone around me is living an active life we don't have to worry about fitness per se because there's so many different options that you can have between sitting on the couch and training for 90 minutes a day so let's find something in the middle of that spectrum a good start is walking a better start is walking plus 20 push-ups and 20 air squats. And if you can do those little movement snacks throughout the day, then all of a sudden we get 20 minutes built in. We've got good systems created. We can hit it hard for 20 minutes, but everyone has just adopted instead of thinking, well, I'm either going to watch Netflix and chill, or I have to go to the gym. Now, all of a sudden we're just creating a lifestyle that we are in shape. It's an identity shift that I wish more people were able to just understand that, the difference we saying between saying like, I have to go to the gym today. Okay. Well, I don't even like that. I get to go to the gym. It's I live an active life. So if I make it to the gym, that's a bonus because even if I don't make it to the gym, I still am walking with my family. I'm still, I still have this ability to go and run and play with my kids, or I have the ability to go outside and create cool memories. I get to go walk around barefoot in my front yard. There's, there's so many things on the spectrum of couch and gym, right? And not even just the gym, but the idea that you have to be there that long. There's so many things in the middle that we can get very good at and, and start to, you know, kind of like take many steps up the ladder and never go to a gym. There's just, there's count, one of my favorite games to play. And this is going to be so ridiculous to people that just haven't, you should totally get great at this game. This game will change your life. I promise you, because there's no reason you should never, you should ever not work out. I just call it the mailbox game in every neighborhood I've ever lived in, in any city, in any state, in anywhere, you can walk around a neighborhood and everyone's got mailboxes. And all you do is you walk. And then you look at the mailbox, you go, I'm going to start running as hard as I can when I get to that mailbox. To the next mailbox. 
to five mailboxes, mailboxes down, yeah. to seven mailboxes down. It doesn't matter. The goal is that you hit the mailbox and you just go mm -hmm. and you run as hard as you possibly can. And by the time you've done that to like eight mailboxes, you're smoked. You've run fast. You've been athletic. Your heart rate's through the roof. There's a there's hills built into your neighborhood that you didn't even know about. You've done so many good things. And all you have to do is just go outside and play the mailbox game. It's mm -hmm. so simple. There's no gym involved. You don't have to even be the weird person doing push-ups on the floor. You just go outside and just <laughs> run hard. Like I nobody, love it. Nobody actually chases fitness by confining themselves to having to be in a gym. If that's the only place the fitness happens, we've just completely failed as an industry. What we really want people to do and what people are genuinely chasing is that feeling when you're a kid, when you're just outside playing. Right. And well, that's one thing beautiful about having a daughter is I just get to go play again. I love going to the oh soccer my gosh. field. I would spend yes. so much less time at gyms if all the dads and moms and everyone got into the court and all their families were out there and we just all played. Every night there was just like a game at five o'clock and mm -hmm. come show up. But if you walked over to your neighbor in 2020 and you were like, hey, I'm organizing some kickball out front, bring your kids, bring your wife, bring your husband, bring everyone, just like come out. We'll, we'll figure out the rules. They're like, well, should I bring it? No, just show up. I'll do everything. Like we have a ball and we're just going to play games. It's the healthiest thing you could do. We're going to go play tag. Think about how insanely healthy tag is. Mm -hmm. Sprinting. Who's playing tag right now? Right. You're sprinting, you're turning, you're hiding, you're seeking, you're doing all of this stuff that is massively important. You fall down on the ground. Like there's an insane amount of benefit to all of these games that we used to play when we were kids that all of a sudden we feel like we just outgrew them because we had right. to go to the gym. When the truth is we just need to, hold ourselves accountable, get up and start living an active life instead of thinking it's either couch or gym. And those are our only two options. I think that's, I think I just talked so, for like 12, 17 straight minutes. I'm, I'm pretty sorry. sure it was freaking awesome <laughs> though, because the whole time I'm thinking, well, this is all completely obtainable. When we were in Michigan visiting my, all my nieces and nephews a couple weeks ago, my favorite part of the whole trip was when we were in Lake Michigan and my nieces, I love to pick them up, throw them in the air, in the water. Yeah. And I did that Phenomenal. with the four of them for like, I don't know, 40 minutes. That's awesome, like, yeah, right? like you each get three, you know, three throws and then it's the next kid, yeah. three throws. I woke up the next day and was so sore and I was like, that was amazing. I wish yeah. that I could do because I, Got to hang out with all the kids. They were squealing and laughing and having just yeah. like the best time ever. And I was doing something that, you know, at the time didn't even feel like a workout, but obviously was because, Absolutely. you know, I was using all my back muscles, all my arm muscles, all my core muscles. Yeah. Um, and it was it's incredible. Yeah, it was awesome. And, it's fun. and it was free. <laughs> yeah, it is, I think that people just really struggle to find ways to have fun because the inertia is so hard. Like it's, there's nothing fun. And this is why people struggle going to the gym. You're talking about your workout clothes, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing fun about that feeling. Like you dread it. You're like, yeah, I don't look as good as I did five months ago. Like one, who cares Two, like overcoming that is, is a really challenging thing, but it's, it's really confronting it too mm -hmm. and and say and like leaning into the fact that it's uncomfortable and going after and going well this this is awkward it's really hard to get people to go to the gym to lift weights because they're awkward and that's why people pay for trainers because they, it it alleviates a lot of the pressure off of themselves that they that they're screwing up or they look goofy or people are staring at them trust me no one's staring at you nobody goes to the gym like they're so in their own world with their headphones on it's just you it's your it's you're looking and you, you see yourself in the mirror and you feel like nothing's happening and you feel like you have so far to go well you do and the rest and how far you have to go is the rest of your life so if you keep pushing it off it just doesn't work but if you start who cares right now i say that in in a way that i know that I have to help people get better at it um, and that it is a real thing. But at the same time, 
the quicker you start, the quicker you get over those feelings and you don't have to live with that burden of feeling it because it takes two weeks. It's like, it's like public speaking. It's public speaking's terrifying until you stand on until stage you do it. and you do it three or four times. You go, oh, I just stand and you're up like here the and I rush. Talk. The rush is amazing. Yeah, you get excited yeah. about it because you start to create really good momentum and you see mm-hmm. positivity coming out of it and and all of the the extra stuff that comes to you just by taking action and getting through that that sticky point of just like the Ugh, I don't want uh, I don't feel good about this. Like everyone goes through that. Like everyone and. I it's think the, going. the idea that it doesn't have to be this production, yeah. you know, like, and getting over the mental block that, yeah, I don't, because even when we, you know, I loved Orange Theory Fitness because it was brainless. Yeah. Like, that was my time that I got to go. People told me what to do. Um, I came out a sweaty beast, and it was fantastic. Yeah. And then I thought that I would do that on my own when we quit the gym and then joined O2. Um, But I never worked out as hard without having other people around. Like, I'm just a creature of, like, I'm competitive. Like, I want to do better than the person next to me. If I'm on a treadmill, I'm in a competition. I'm racing the person next to me. They don't know (laughs) it, but (laughs) but we are racing. (laughs) And... um, so I think the the permission to say, okay, reformulate your brain, 20 minutes, if you go hard and go at it, that's yeah. still a good workout. You don't have to be doing something for 60 minutes, 90 minutes for it to have a good effect it, it on your, actually, your health and wellness. Yeah, it actually is less beneficial to do something that's that long because you don't even give yourself the option to have, to have the small buy-in. Like going back to people saving money to buy a house, you might not be saving a thousand dollars a month and then have to build that, that amount of cash to be able to get there. But why don't we just stop spending money on a type of, um, expense and then maybe it's eating out and you just don't do that. You find another way. People just think change is so hard and change is really hard. And it should also be practice. You should really practice it because eliminating things from your life is like the most freeing thing in the entire world. Um, but you know, if, if people need, they don't have to save the thousand dollars right away. Let's just save 40 bucks. You eat out one less time Mm -hmm. and you know, man, eating out is, if you do that a lot, it is the most expensive gnarliest death by $25 at a time. And if you just start to add up the fact that like the tip is an extra five bucks and all these little things that add on top of it, you realize that so much of your money is just wasted on bad food and just it's, it kills you. So if, if the goal is to buy a house in the next two to three years, well, maybe you can't put the grand in this month into savings, but let's put 20 bucks in, let's eat out one time a month less. And now we've got, maybe we save 40 bucks a week. Well, that's 160 a month. Now we start these like really good positive habits that are getting you closer to where you're going and you don't even have to worry about eating out. It's probably a lot easier if you just skip one meal where you're eating out to skip the next one and the next one. And now all of a sudden you've got an extra 500 500 bucks a month that you're putting into savings and it feels good. You see it going in the positive direction. It's the same way with fitness. Do the 20 minutes, wake up 30 minutes earlier when nobody else is awake, you're not being judged by anybody. You feel great about doing it. You build that like internal commitment and resilience to the inertia of doing nothing. And all of a sudden it's like, nobody else is doing this, but I am. I feel great about myself. I chose to get out of bed. I just did these push ups. I walked a mile. Nobody else in my neighborhood right now is doing what I'm doing. And I feel great about it. That feeling carries with you, not just throughout the day, but doing it again tomorrow, the following day. You just have to build these habits. You know, I love the idea of, of freedom, right? It's financial freedom, freedom Business of health, owner freedom. All of it, right? But you can't get there unless you eliminate all of this extra stuff. And you do that through discipline and being able to hold yourself accountable. Getting out of bed early in the morning, it sucks. It's hard. But there's a reason that people that have a nine to five sleep till eight. 
They're not willing to get out of bed that early. They're not willing to go and do it. So if you mm -hmm. want to own a business, well, you might have a nine to five right now. And if you want to own a business in the future, you better start waking up at five because from five to nine, you've got four hours to start building something. And those are my witching hours where no one else is no one's emailing you. me. No one's calling. The phone's not blowing up. Yeah. Um, you know, there, I mean, there's times when I wake up at three or four in the morning and I'm just like, ping, okay, yeah. I'm going to go get it's in the office and just start doing the thing. And all you have to do is just transfer a little bit of that into fitness. Mm -hmm. And in all honesty, personally, fitness is kind of like the, the center of a lot of stuff for me. Um, but when I do that and I ignore my phone, I ignore emails, I ignore everything, I intentionally leave all that stuff at home and I go for the walk in the morning, it's nice because I know for the rest of the day, I'm probably gonna be on my computer, I'm probably gonna be on the phone, I'm probably gonna be on social media, I'm gonna be doing all this stuff, and this may be the only time of quiet that I get. This may be the only time where I'm actually consciously walking around and I look at a tree and I'm like, oh, That tree is beautiful, yeah. yeah. You're awesome. Like, that's so rad. You may only get half an hour, so you might as well do something for yourself as early as possible that takes 30 minutes that's going to have just a massive positive impact on getting the ball rolling on your own fitness, but also having a positive impact on the rest of your day. And you just have to get up. Yeah. And, and you're then you're putting up. and then you're putting all the good juju back out into the universe. Right? <laughs> it's the best. It is the best. So that was awesome. I feel <laughs> like I feel like I want to go do something now. Well, it just makes me super that's pumped. Good. Yeah. You're motivated right now. I Problem am. is motivation runs out. It does. Or Thank you can just pay, Thankfully play this over. my husband is super good motivator, <laughs> which is awesome. Yeah. Um and he's willing to do all the things with me, which I think if you can find a partner that works yeah. out with you, stays healthy with you, plays with you, does all the things, then. So my um, wife is like the perfect example of, you know, things that she needs more things to line up. She's not fighting through tons of um, like forcing herself to get out of bed. Like we had a baby two years ago. It's spotty, your mom. I didn't really know how much of that actually is real. It's crazy. Um, but I have people that come to the house now just to train in the middle of the day. And she's like there all the time because she needs people mm -hmm. and gyms are closed. Yep. So the motivation is gone. Just like you're saying, like I yeah. used to enjoy going to Orange Theory. That community aspect is very real. But now that people come to the house to train, she's downstairs all the time. She's all about, she, she makes time to be down there, to be with people. She just needs stuff. So figuring out what that thing is that you really want. Maybe mm -hmm. you have to like, there's another business owner or there's another person that likes to wake up early in your neighborhood and do and it together. Go talk. Yeah. You just got to figure out who you, what you like to do, who you like to be around and make it a positive. Well, I do love walking. There you go. I love nature. Done. And those two things are important. I love the feeling after a workout. Like there's nothing better than feeling sore, tired, sweaty. Yeah. Like you just, ground it out for other business owners that are busy. Mm -hmm. Um, are there any other tips or suggestions you have for them? Um, in terms of like things that they can do with their kids or things that they can, cause I know Kid that there's a crazy. lot of business and I feel like when somebody either starts a business or is in a business, the business becomes your top priority because like you said on our last podcast, you're shit up a creek with like, you're the person that yeah. everything falls upon. Yeah. So, you know, when I wake up early and I'm doing my thing in the morning and I don't have to worry about anybody else or any other demands, that's like the best time. Yeah. But come eight o'clock, people wake up, people wake up, crap's <laughs> happening. Yeah. Emails are hitting the inbox. I'm yeah. getting text messages from people, you know, putting out fires and, if I don't work out in like, like the morning, then there's quite a good chance that it's not going to happen. If something, you know, if somebody wants to see a house or a coaching yeah. clients, like, Hey, can we do a consult? Like I need to take those things when the taking is good. Yeah. So I'm, even though 
the thing that I did love about going to like Orange Theory or when I was at O2 doing group fitness classes is that I would tell my clients, no, I have an appointment. Yeah. Because there was some sort of accountability there. Totally. Which I think that like I just told myself in my head right now, idiot, tell them you have an appointment and stick to you. If you put it on your calendar, don't let somebody else steal that. Um, I mean, the thing about working out and just eating well, um, and eating well is, you know, just as important. We could talk about that forever. Yep. Um, they're, they're both equally a hundred percent important to, to longevity. And, and, um, I mean the, the thing about being a business owner, having kids, being married, all of it, it's all it all deserves a hundred percent of your attention, but also you have to realize there's a fourth person in there. That's you and you deserve a hundred percent of the attention when you can and creating a system. And I mean, it, it really, to me goes back to building a life in, in which being active is the most important thing. Like me being here right now, um, me being here right now is taking away from the fact that my daughter gets home seven minutes ago and I'm going to spend less time with her today than I typically do, which I don't like. I know that's coming. Mm -hmm. I am super happy to be here. I enjoy this. And this is like the legitimate thought process. So this morning I wake up at five, I'm in the gym at 515. I work out, I go for a walk, I do a bunch of video editing. I do calls at two o'clock. I left my house to come here. And in order to make time for her, when nine, when eight thirty hit this morning, I stopped everything I did. We went to the soccer fields. We kicked the soccer ball around. We went to the horse farm. We looked at the horses. We went to the coffee shop together and we created an hour and a half block where I just took the morning off so I could be dad. Which is amazing. But what it's is, also what's your daughter's name again? It's, I have it right Adelaide. Now. Adelaide. Yeah, I was like, that's such a cool name. Shh. But it's, it's, you have to go do all the things and you have to block it off. And I wish I was like actually really good at this. There's many days where I'm, overstressed because work's piling up or something happened at daycare or my wife and I aren't getting along for some odd reason and there's tension there. All of those things creep into each bucket. My training then gets clobbered when those buckets Mm -hmm. don't work well. Like today, there's no training. But I want to be here. I also want to spend as much time as I can with my daughter. So my work suffers because I'm not going straight through the day. I'm taking this block of time, this 92 minutes, two hours. I don't don't count it. um, Where I'm just, there's no computers. There's no phone. I'm just dad. Mm -hmm. And we go to the soccer field. We go get muffins. we, We go to the horse farm. We go and check stuff out. We just go play for two hours. But the whole thing is active. I don't have to really worry about working out today because I've already run around the soccer field. Like as much as I'm playing with my daughter, I'm also kicking a soccer ball and running and doing stuff. And she can't like keep up with me, Mm -hmm. but I still go run. Right. And I'm playing by myself. And she's getting, she's getting a foundational lifestyle. She she doesn't know anything else. Right. Like this to her is just normal. It would Suck. I feel so bad. She she is going to need the strongest man to be able to keep up with her. Come. She, she doesn't know anything else. And that is something that I wish more adults understood is that there was probably a time in which you really enjoyed playing, where you really liked going outside with your friends and running around in the yard and playing hide and go seek or playing tag. Riding my bike. All of yes. that. And nobody ever sat around and was like, oh, well, you're you're doing fitness. No, at no, some point, just... just play turned into fitness. And well, nobody wants to do fitness, but they want to chase that feeling that happened back when they were a kid and mm-hmm. they were carefree and in this like in this beautiful place where they could just go run around and do anything they wanted. But it's it doesn't 
exist as an adult. You have to go like manufacture it in a gym. And then when you get there, it's awkward. It, it's not free feeling, but if you make it a lifestyle, it all becomes easier on day one. It's super awkward on day two. It's a little bit less awkward on day 30. You kind of get into a flow. Like, this is what I do. This is what I like to, I like to go run, you know, and then there's little games to play. And now a year, two, three years down the road, you're really good at just having an active life where play is something that you do and it, it becomes who you are. It's your identity that you're able to go outside and just be active. And most people can't get past day three, much less to 30 or three years. And they don't have that momentum building in a positive direction to just be able to enjoy life, understand physical freedom and, and just go play. The gym isn't, the gym is, it's this tiny little piece of what should be a very active life. Yeah. I think the one thing that I've noticed the most that's come from COVID though, is more people being outside, riding their bikes, totally. walking in the neighborhood. Absolutely. Um, I'm a big mushy baby when it comes to certain things. I was driving home from work one day, like when I was in college and um i was probably 19 or so 20 years old i wasn't old enough to drink yet i was you know but i i worked my ass off i worked at a golf and country yeah. club i would get up and go and work the six o'clock shift i'd work from six to two and then i'd go home for a little bit shower change do whatever and then i would come back and work din dinner service yeah so i'd work out on the golf course come back and i was driving home one day and there were this pack of kids riding their bikes and just like hooting and hollering and having a blast. And I just started sobbing because I was like, I want to be like that. I just was yeah. like, oh my gosh, when did I become this adult? And now I don't have that freedom. And I was like, enjoy it, kids. Enjoy it while it lasts. But I feel like we've gotten a bit of that back Yeah. because now Scott and I are walking in the mornings and in the evenings. And we are, you know, the other day I was like, let's go this different way that we never. And we literally wound up walking five miles because awesome. I just decided I had a wild hair. And I was like, hey, let's go down this other. We didn't look at a map. Like, we literally yeah. just started walking and That's with amazing. no plan. And it was fantastic. And we wound up, you know, walking in the dark and uh, down the side yeah. of a road. And it was a little terrifying. But... Perfect. That kind of thing and you're is not doing it for fitness. You're just going just and enjoying doing it to enjoy being with. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun to be on a little adventure together. Yeah. I think one of the most <laughs> fun things you could do is like go to a golf course. It's, it's perfectly paved and each golf course is between five and six miles long. Yeah. Like if you're traveling, there's always a golf course and I'll just go to the golf course and just run 18 holes down the car path. And it's perfect. You get to see a whole bunch of new stuff. It's really just about not buying into the comfort and forcing yourself because the more you force it and the more you, you buy into the fact that like, this is my identity. Mm -hmm. This is, this is like even larger of a conversation on people's identities and the stories that they tell themselves. But if you identify with act, an active life and you want to be seen as somebody that is always active, it's much easier to get off the couch and go be active versus somebody that seeks comfort and wants to be doing less. Mm -hmm. I always want to do more. I have to like tame Contain it down. Contain yourself. I have to, Contain I have to, yourself, Anders. I have to wake up at 5 a.m. <laughs> so that I'm tired at night because I just want to go play all the time. I mean, even in business... There's a lot of things in business that you have to figure out and you have to play the game, but you're playing a game in which you keep score in a way of like, these things work. Uh, so we yeah, keep my PNL is my yeah. scoreboard and I'm like, and am I winning or losing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, it's in, if it's black, you've won for the month. Yes. And if it's red, you lost. You lost. <laughs> and there's ways to play the game better than others. And it takes a while to learn those rules, but it's... If, if you can figure out a way to turn things into fun and, and care, bring that carefreeness of, of playing that you had when you were a kid, when there was no worries and there wasn't these boxes that we put things in and the gym is hard and I don't want to go like just right now, instead of saying like, I, I have to go to the gym or I get to go to the gym, just be like, 
my identity. Like I'm the type of person that lives an active life. What does that mm -hmm. look like to you? And then go do it. I love it. And I love you. You're so amazing. I feel super pumped. I hope that our listeners yeah. feel pumped as well. And if you enjoyed today's show, please go out there and share us because I want to get on that top 50 chart of most listened to podcasts at some yeah. point. And that's a goal of mine as well as awesome. living an active lifestyle. And I think that our listeners are really going to enjoy everything that you shared with us today. Thanks for having Anders, me. you're the best. This Thank you so much. And we hope we see you next time on our Wired to Change podcast.